Recently, when out on a walk, we found a load of fallen pine needles. We've watched a number of videos of people making coil baskets with pine needles before, and decided that we'd like to have a shot too. So come join us today as we make a pine needle coil basket for the first time. After taking the pine needles home, we let them dry out, so the first thing we needed to do when crafting was soak them in a tub with some fresh water for about 20 minutes just to soften them a bit so that they don't snap while we're using them. This plastic straw we're cutting here is to use as a gauge to ensure a consistent thickness of basket as we go round. It also helps to keep the pine needles bunched together while we work. We'll pick a colour of thread to bind the basket. This blue was our favourite. I laid the end of the thread along the needles and then wound the thread back along itself so that it would hold itself in place. Once a short length was wound, I folded it back on itself and started to alternate between wrapping both ends together and wrapping just the working end. As I reached the end of that section and was beginning to turn round again, I handed over to Claudia who pretty much just sewed the rest of the basket. Over to you, Clo. I think I rolled a one for dexterity this week. Working with these materials and these methods felt so foreign and so fiddly to me. Having a thimble to get started here was quite handy to help me get the needle through the section that was fully wrapped in thread. Though, as I went along and the basket started taking shape, I was able to ditch it. Fiddliness wasn't helped by us using a doubled over thread like this. The two strands kept getting out of sync and kept getting tangled up in the pine needles and in itself. We had picked this thread from our stash because it was cotton and we liked the idea of sewing with a natural fiber for this project, but in future, or if you're wanting to do this at home, definitely try to find a thicker thread for this, even if it means using polyester. We also know from bookbinding that when using natural fibre thread it can be really helpful to pull the thread through some beeswax first. This helps protect it a bit against the friction of sewing. We did have beeswax, but we forgot to use it when we got started and it felt silly to start waxing the thread halfway through the project. Each new stitch binds two rows together by going around the current in previous row. As you can see, about here is where I start getting more comfortable with the project and my sewing becomes smoother and faster. And I don't just mean because we sped it up. So here is where I decided to start building up the sides of the basket. Up until then I'd just been sewing a disc as flat as I could manage. I was nervous about this part because I really didn't know what I was doing. So I took my time and I winged it, but carefully, and started to shape the walls by angling the new row of needles on top of the previous one instead of to the side. Experienced basket makers know all sorts of pretty sewing techniques for getting the stitches looking really nice and even all around the basket. I'll leave a link to some examples in the description below. But I am not an experienced basket maker and decided that the basket holding its shape was the important thing for this project, so I basically just did whatever I liked. I tried as much as I could to add the new needles to the middle of the gauge so they'd get cinched in nicely and not just come straight out the other end of the straw. I also snipped off any pokey outy bits of pine needle as I went. I'd usually notice them when my finger or the thread got caught in it. Also, once knots were sewn in, I'd snip off any tail ends of that too. As I ran out of thread, which happened quite a lot, I measured out a new section to cut. People tend to recommend hand sewing with no more than about one arm's length of thread. That usually feels like a manageable amount. Much more in the mass of thread gets pretty unwieldy. So I doubled up that measurement and tied a new thread onto the basket with a double double knot. So I would loop the thread twice, fold it over, and do another two loops. So a sort of reef knot with two twists. Often I'd make the stitch just to the left of one below, which would help the new stitch stay in place and not just slide right over. But if there was a bigger gap, I would just sew in the middle of it. I'd also vary the stitch a bit. Most of the time I would sew right around in a sort of continual spiral motion but every four to seven stitches or so, whenever I felt it needed it, I'd loop the thread over the needle, a bit like a blanket stitch, just to secure this thread a bit more and to keep the tension better. Mm -hmm. 
and here's me getting to the end of our stash. To finish off, I just kept sewing as normal, just around fewer and fewer needles as it tapered off. I tried to push the ends of the shorter needles underneath the longer ones to prevent them from sticking out so much. Once everything was sewn in, I wove the thread in and out around previous stitches, making a few knots here and there to secure it properly. Again, absolutely winging it. And then I just did a final pass at cleaning up the basket. And we're done! Our first ever attempt at making a basket out of nothing but pine needles and thread. In the end, Claudia spent numerous hours over about three days putting this beauty together. It's definitely not professional artisan standard, but it really is an incredibly satisfying object to look at and hold in person. It's got a nice density to it, it feels remarkably sturdy. I also rather love how it smells, it reminds me of Christmas. We're not quite sure what to use it for, but here are a few things that we've put into it just to see how it looks. We hope you've enjoyed watching, we'd love to hear your comments or suggestions, especially if you're familiar with making pine needle baskets. If you enjoyed this, do consider pressing the like button, it helps us out a lot, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of us learning and making new things. Thanks, we'll see you next time.